Hino no Tabi is probably, excluding Kekai Sensen and beyond, my favorite show airing this season for a whole host of reasons that I'll get to in a future attention span episode. So today I just wanted to highlight one of the most recent episodes to come out, episode 5, titled A Country of Liars. I want to talk about this episode because, to be frank, it stunned me after watching it the first time, and I would highly recommend watching it before you watch this analysis if you haven't. I haven't read the source material, nor have I seen the previous anime run for Kino, so perhaps I'm several years late on this, but this episode highlights to me the value of an episodic adventure series and what it's capable of. In this instance, that would be the immediate juxtaposition without whiplash to achieve clear dichotomies for the audience to think about. For Kino's journey, it allows us to think about how we remember heroes, both living and dead. Episode 5 drops us straight into Kino and Hermes visiting the memorial hall of a former traveler who became the savior of the country that Kino is currently traveling in. After hearing about how it was destiny that the traveler arrived there and overthrew the previous government, we head inside to see a normal house, filled with normal things. The tour guide misappropriates a trowel likely used for makeshift toilets as used for flowers, and a knife that was a cheap souvenir as a present from a dear friend. The tour guide says that all the items on display show his greatness, benevolence, and abundant wisdom, but are just bags and pans. And then we head to the room with the traveler's motorad, a sentient bike like Hermes, a bike that doesn't get to drive or get to move, but just sits there in testament to a dead man. And in that time, it hasn't spoken until Kino and Hermes arrive, and it asks to either be ridden or smashed to pieces, of which Kino can do neither. The dead man's bike says that this place is hell, that bikes are meant to be moving, and thus in this place where he can't move and is constantly having maintenance done, leaves him in a state of nothingness. The framing for this section is blatantly intentional. We never see the former traveler, even in all the photos he's wearing a helmet. We don't know his name, we don't know how he died, we don't know where he came from. All we know is that he was important to the people of the country enough that they have immortalized him through his belongings and that they have romanticized the idea of him to a point where it is amusing to Kino, Hermes, and the audience. You feel pity for the motorad. It has one function, and instead it's just being memorialized in service of the person who used to fulfill the function it was designed to do. If you apply that to everything though, all of a sudden the memorial hall seems like a bad thing. It's filled with items and materials that could still be used. The house could be lived in, the pot could be cooked in, the trowel could still dig holes for flowers, and well, the knife would likely still be a souvenir from a former travel. How does a sleeping bag tell us anything about the man except that he needed to sleep and he was a traveler? How does a pan show wisdom? Unless you're Brock in the rain, the function is simple, and it doesn't say anything about the man it's supposed to be memorializing. And that's why the narrative for this segment is framed in this way. Because without knowing the man, we can't learn anything from the things that are in the house. And even if we knew the man, would we gain anything from seeing his canteen? This memorial is bad because it doesn't remember the man in any meaningful way, but instead it's just a collection of his property, and doesn't go to show any of the traits that he supposedly should be remembered for. You could say that this is the first takeaway from the memorial hall, that there's no point in keeping objects that don't remember the person, place, or thing for why they're important. Is there intrinsic value in protecting a knife? In keeping a shovel in a glass case? In leaving chairs behind guard posts? If these things don't conjure up the thing that they're supposed to be memorializing, they have failed to achieve the memory. You could apply this to our society as well. Is there a point in roping off a computer that some world leader had? Maybe if they launched a tech revolution, but otherwise it seems unnecessary. Putting on display objects that belong to a person, but were not intrinsic to understanding the person or what made them worth remembering is a meaningless gesture, and maybe even a bad one. The motorad is what strikes this line of thinking, but think about what put him into that place. It doesn't seem like it was the traveler's wish for him to wind up like that. It was voted on by a council and puts the bike in what it describes as a living hell. That fact, and the examples of the trowel and the knife, would suggest that they've elevated the traveler beyond the person he was. To hear the tour guide, that man was destined to be in the country. That he was a man who epitomized every positive value. Someone whose junk was as deserving to be put on display as any accomplishment he had. Even this monument is too humble for such a great man, she says. This is a man whose poop trowel has been transformed into a way to plant flowers. It's ironic that the man who we're told didn't believe in grandeur wound up memorialized in such a way. This is the second takeaway, that there is a tendency to attribute too much to the dead and forget the person. By putting so much stock in just the things instead of the accomplishments, ignoring the man and instead putting in the hero, you wind up losing sight of the human element. I'd like to think that the segment of the episode ends with the hope that the motorhead gets out of there someday, and I believe that this will be the case because of what Kino says to the child who asks her how to become a traveler.
After Kino dodges the question, she doesn't say, well, how did your former president start traveling? Which would seem important to understanding the man. Instead, she says that the child should ask the motorad about how to become a traveler. This seems to be the show's answer to the best way to remember a dead hero. To let them live on through the people, or in this case, bikes, they leave behind and to honor their memory by following through on what was important to them. In this way, the boy who desires to become a traveler will be carrying on both the literal memory, the motorad, and the figurative one, traveling. Though we're left without certainty that this will be the case. This is where the episodic format fits so perfectly, because while the previous segment, Tale of a Traveler, is self-contained, we follow it up with the second segment, A Country of Liars, which gives us a hero who is alive and to contrast with the traveler hero from the previous story. The Country of Liars story has tons of reveals and layers, but I'm just going to cut through all of them and get straight to the difference between how the hero, who I'll be referring to as the rebel, wants to be remembered, and how everyone else would have him be remembered, compared to how they actively remember him. The citizens of the country state as they relate the story to Kino that had everything gone according to plan, the rebel would have become a part of the new government that he sought to create. Instead, his apparent madness at the thought of causing the death of his lover caused him to no longer be fit. The government instead takes care of him by paying for a caretaker and a house and leaving him be. The way the people of the country remember him is as someone who is to be pitied, someone whose accomplishments were critical to the success of forming the new country, but who lost too much to ever be himself again. The people acknowledge that they don't think he'll ever return to normal, that the rebel will likely be seen as a sad story both presently and in the future. Ideally, it would seem that the way they'd like to remember the rebel is as a heroic figure, as a leader, instead of the tragic figure they received in his place. The rebel himself is aware of this, and all of the various threads of lies that surround him, his lover, and the country, but it's clear that he doesn't desire to be remembered in the way that his countrymen want him to be remembered. Hell, it doesn't seem like he wants to be remembered at all. We don't know for what reason the rebel fought, but given the fact that he didn't want to be a leader seems to suggest that he was simply doing what was right, eliminating a tyrannical governmental system. His desire to live a simple life with his lover, who is secretly his caretaker, requires him to be remembered as a tragic figure, though the rebel would seemingly have it no other way. That desire, of course, leads to the series of lies that make up the country of liars, but speaks to perhaps the most heroic quality of the rebel, self-sacrifice. He's okay with living a lie, with keeping his love, his friends, and everyone else in the dark because everyone is happy with the way things are, which makes it so that he's also okay with the way things are. In these two stories, we're told of two men, one living, one dead, who both brought down governments and are remembered as heroes, though the circumstance for those memories are quite different. The way that the rebel will be remembered is not entirely accurate to who he was. Neither is the traveler remembered entirely accurately either. The fifth episode of Kino's journey is a reminder to the viewer that no one is remembered as they truly are or were. Memory has changed to support narratives, and we can do no more than to ask why the narrative has created the figure it has. Was the Traveler elevated as a way to produce national pride? The Rebel forged his own narrative in order to stay true to what he thought was important, as does the Lover and the Town in their own narratives. So how should we remember our heroes? As infallible? As tragic? Or as they truly were? A person with many facets who meant many things to many different people, whose life has been swept up in a narrative that is far greater than any one person. No memorial is perfect in encompassing an entire life. But sometimes remembering what was important to the person, whether it's traveling, a simple love, or doing what's right, is all we can do for those we call heroes. Thanks for watching.